first thing you're going to want to do is remove the main blades. The next thing we are going to do after we have removed the main rotor blades is that we're going to check to see if the spindle is bent. To do this, all you need is one 1.5 millimeter Allen key and all you need to do is stick it into the screw and simply rotate it clockwise. If the spindle is straight, you should see no motion on the grips as you rotate your Allen key. If the spindle is bent, what you will see is one or both of the grips moving up and down and as well as side to side as you rotate this. Once you have checked to see if the spindle is bent and confirmed that it is bent and needs to be replaced, the next thing you'll want to do is remove the four links attaching the main rotor grips. There's one here, 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 and here. Now, you'll have to use your hands for this as getting the tool in there without damaging the grips is a little difficult. So simply use your fingers and pop them off. All right, now you're gonna take two 1.5 millimeter Allen keys and you're going to insert one on each side of the spindle and unscrew the spindle. Typically one screw will untighten and the other screw will stay attached to the spindle. Now, once you've removed the screw, set it off to the side. Once you have the screws removed, simply pull the grips apart carefully, making sure not to lose the various pieces that are on the spindle as well as in the grip. Now, once you have removed one of the grips, what you'll see is that there are two washers on still on the spindle. You want to remove those carefully, making sure not to lose them. And set them off to the side. Now to pull off the other grip, be mindful that one of the dampeners may come alongside with the grip. This is perfectly normal. Simply side, slide the dampener off and reinstall it back into the rotor hub. This is also, if necessary, this is also how you would replace your dampeners. You simply remove these dampeners here and insert some new ones. Now, you have the grip with the spindle and the washers that was mentioned previously. Slide those off and set them off to the side. And now what you want to do is that you'll want to push the spindle through the grip as such, and pull it apart. Once you have the spindle out of the grip, what you'll need to do is that you'll have to find a way to grip the spindle in such a way that it does not gouge it. Because if you gouge the spindle, it'll be very difficult to slide it back into the grips. So I have a tool here that's designed for that purpose, and you use your 1.5 millimeter Allen key, get a pretty good grip on it, and remove the spindle screw. Once you've removed the spindle screw, set it off to the side and remove the thrust bearing that is still on the spindle. All right, now that we have the new spindle, before we install it onto the, into the grips, it is very important that you understand how to reinstall the thrust bearing. The thrust bearing is made up of three pieces that you see here, the inner race, the ball race, and the outer race. Now, at first glance, it would appear that the inner race and the outer race are identical, when in fact they are not. The inner diameter of 
the inner race is actually a little bit larger than the inner diameter of the outer race. Now, without actually measuring the two, the easiest way to know which one goes on first is to simply take one and slide it onto the spindle. If you're able, if the race feels loose on the spindle, that's probably the inner race. Now, to be 100% sure, take the other race and slide it onto the spindle as well. This race, you can only get on at the very top of the spindle. This is the outer race. Now that we know how to properly install the thrust bearing, what we're going to do is that we're going to reinstall the brand new spindle onto the helicopter. So in order to do this, we're going to take our new spindle and we're going to slide it into the main rotor hub of the helicopter. Now you want to center it the best you can. When you reinstall the main rotor grips, you want to make sure that the washers are installed in the proper order. And the first washer to go on will be the silver washer, followed by the brass washer. You take the silver washer and slide it onto the spindle. Now, when you install the brass washer, you need to take note that there's actually a raised portion on one side and flat on the other. What you need to make sure of is that the flat side is closest to the main shaft. So the flat side is the one that is in contact with the silver washer you had installed previously. Now once you have installed the brass washer, you're actually ready to install, reinstall your grip. Simply slide your grip onto the spindle. When you're installing the grip washer, as well as the thrust bearing, it's actually easier to let gravity work for you. So in order to do that, I'm actually going to lay the helicopter down on its side. Next thing I'm going to do is put the washer on. I'm going to insert the washer that separates the radial bearing from the thrust bearing. I'm just going to drop that in there. And then we're going to use an Allen key just to get it to seat properly. All right, next thing I'm going to do is going to install the inner race of the thrust bearing and we're going to use an allen key to make sure that it doesn't flip over when you insert it. Also use the allen key to make sure that it's fully seated into the grip. And we're going to repeat the same method for the ball race. And finally the outer race. Now that we have the thrust bearing installed, we are going to take our spindle screw and insert it onto the 1.5 millimeter Allen key. And at this point in time, it's a good idea to add a little drop of thread lock to the tip of the screw. This is to ensure that the screw does not come loose in flight. Now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and put the screw on. Now to put on the second grip, we're going to insert the silver washer first. And then we're going to put on the brass washer, paying attention to the ridge, making sure that the flat side is in contact with the silver washer we just inserted. And then we're going to put on the main blade grip. And once the main blade grip is in place, we're going to put in the washer that separates the radial bearing from the thrust bearing and just drop that in there. And then we're going to uh, install the inner race of the thrust bearing using the same method we used before. Put the thrust bearing on your Allen key, align the Allen key in, and then drop the thrust bearing. Using the same key, make sure the inner race is fully seated into the grip. Using the same method, drop in the ball race. And finally, drop in the outer race. And once you've completed that, Install 
uh, insert the screw onto the Allen key. And at, again, at this point, you would apply a small drop of thread lock to the tip of the screw. And finally, you install the screw into the spindle. Once the screw is in place, set the helicopter upright again. Use two Allen keys. Insert one into each screw and tighten them down. Once they are tightened down, you need to reattach your links. And what you'll notice is that the mixing arm here has a long side and a short side. You want to make sure that the long link attaches to the long side of the mixing arm. So I'm going to do that now. And then attach the link opposite to it on the short side. And repeat the process for the other grip. And then to complete the assembly, you reinstall your main rotor blades. And you are done.